Warning, Sable contains gruesome depictions of violence, gore, and strong language. It's intended for mature audiences only. Thanks for listening. Sable, The Shattered Worlds, Episode 9, The Price We Pay. Screaming. He could hear everyone around him screaming, frantically running every which way while they shouted at the top of their lungs. Some faces planted against him, but he stood motionless, like a cliff being attacked by the oncoming waves. He would not budge. He would not pay the scrambling humans any mind. His metallic, red eyes were both glued on the dozens of screens before him, all flashing the same image. The same... perplexing image. This was all his mind could focus on, all it wanted to focus on. Let the pathetic flesh puppets scream in their unknowing. That's how they handled things they knew nothing about, right? Scream at it until it goes away, or try to kill it. But how would you kill an upside-down world hovering above your own? How would you ask it to go away? It had just appeared, and yet Null was acting as if it had always been there. That this upside-down world was simply hidden behind the clouds until this very moment. His steel face revealed no emotion, his lips unmoving. He was taking in every detail that he could make out, focusing on brushing over the image with a fine-toothed comb. Nothing would get past him. Not on this. What was hovering over the Imperium base Null found himself in appeared to be a city, though it did not seem like it was ever designed by human hands. The angles in which the buildings were made in made no logical sense. In fact, the shapes those structures were making were not possible, especially by humans and their limited knowledge. Despite the odd, seemingly impossible geometry, there was something oddly familiar about the layout of the city. Null just couldn't put his fingers on what the familiarity was, if there even was any at all. Another poor soul crashed into him, Null moving to grip the hem of her shirt, flinging her across the room without his eyes pulling away from the screen. He heard her body thump to the ground, screams escaping her as she was trampled along with a few other unfortunate workers who found themselves on the ground. It mattered not to Null as he continued studying, making several cameras zoom in closer. What was he looking at? Why did it call him in such a way? Would you like a hint? A voice purred in his left ear, a voice that shouldn't be there. Null turned his head, dread beginning to fill every ounce of his form. The owner of that voice had died, he had made sure of it, and yet, it was like the speaker was right next to him. While you were definitely the strongest between us, it still fascinates me how you never seem to have my ability at seeing the bigger picture in it all. How? Be more specific with your questions, child. The world began to spin around Null. How was he nauseous? Was that even possible? You're dead. You're... you're fucking dead. A chuckle, a sincere one. Ah, such a primitive view on what is living and what is dead. Then a deep, regretful sigh. <sighs> oh, the things I could have taught you. The things I could have shown you. Stop. Stop. Null stumbled back, pressing his hands against the wall behind him. You didn't even know you were being fucking used. Don't act like you can see the big picture. He tried to laugh, but the sound just wouldn't escape his lips. You were nothing but a cog in a machine you never knew the existence of. And what does that make you then, Null? A slightly bigger cog in a machine you don't fully understand. Another heavy sigh. Child, I may have been naive about the Imperium's true intentions, but that does not make me a dullard. Nor does your knowledge of their intent mean that you are somehow superior to me. 
You'd be a fool if you think the Imperium is the biggest piece to this puzzle. The world was seeming to shift and stretch around Null, wrapping around him, suffocating him until there was nothing but black. He began falling, but to where, he had no way of knowing. He just blacked out, his metallic form twisting and spiraling in a bleak, black space that seemed never-ending. Until his ass came to sit upon a leather chair. Birds. That was the first thing he noticed as the world slowly started to come back into focus. There were birds chirping everywhere around him, singing their beautiful songs to him. Color began to come back to his eyes. Gods, it was so bright. Was he outside? The cool breeze against his metal skin answered that question for him. It felt like a lovely autumn day out here. It was serene. It was tranquil. It was obviously a diversion. Once he could actually focus once again, Null began looking about his surroundings, more questions than answers filling his mind. The scene was something straight out of a fantasy novel humans loved reading oh so much. He was sitting inside a large, red tent that overlooked vast, luscious fields filled to the brim with vibrant, breathtaking flora. Giant, mighty oaks littered the grounds, casting massive shadows over everything that had the pleasure of being situated underneath their thick branches. Inside the tent itself was a large, lavish table filled to the brim with food, the smell of roasting meat and sweets filling his entire body. He wasn't feeling hunger, but he did want to fill his mouth with as much food as possible. That was... odd if not downright impossible for a machine. Still, if his mouth could salivate, it would be at this point. Funny how we both seem to perceive ourselves. That voice called out again, now seemingly hundreds of miles away. We startle ourselves when we even have an inkling of feelings like a flesh-and-blood organism. Pain, hunger, exhaustion... Love, it scares you, confuses you. That's fine. It scared me for a while, too. In fact, it didn't stop confusing me until after you... killed me. After that, my mind opened in ways I didn't think possible. So, I guess, in a way, I have a lot to thank you for. A figure soon appeared in front of Null, and though this was an appearance he had never seen, he knew exactly who it was. What was standing before him was a tall mountain of a man, his body thick with muscle, his stomach sticking out ever so slightly. His entire form was dressed in a flowing, extravagant robe of golds and reds, his head completely hairless except for a little fuzz just on the tip of his chin. His eyes were painted in ocean blue, purple glitter complementing his looks. His lips were full, plump, and dressed in black lipstick, a white stripe right down in the middle of his bottom lip. Once their eyes locked, the man smiled wide. To most, it would be a comforting smile, one of warmth, of love, but Null could look past that veneer and see the cruelty behind the smirk, the animalistic fury hiding underneath. This was the Catalyst, the only other creature like Null inside that simulation, and Null had killed him so many years ago. At least, that's what he had hoped. The Catalyst looked upon Null, his smile seeming to only stretch wider across his face, threatening to split it in half. Are you thirsty, Null? How are you alive? Perhaps some tea. I've gotten very, very good at making tea, if I do say so myself, though. You'll need just a little bit of lemon to really spruce it up. Null slammed a fist down upon the table before him, sending plates up into the air, some shattering upon the grass. Catalyst didn't seem to be bothered, reaching down to pour tea into two glasses. Answer the fucking question. 
Null growled out, his fist slowly pounding against the wooden table. Hmm? Catalyst looked towards him, that smile still painted upon his face. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't think you were actually looking for an answer to such a silly question. What are you trying to say? I'm saying you're obviously not as smart as you think you are if you can't keep such idiotic questions to yourself. Though his words were meant to sting, his voice was still soft, almost like a purr. For someone who helped me create millions upon millions of worlds and countless life forms, you seem to have such a primitive idea of what life and death is. The bald man pulled a chair up for himself, offering the second glass of tea to Null, the metal giant begrudgingly taking it, holding it close to his chest. Nothing ever fully dies, Null. You should know that. Our forms may break apart and change shape, but... He took a sip from his tea. Nothing's ever truly gone. Our essence will always remain, even if the physical shell is ripped asunder. Catalyst stretched out his arms. Prime example, you destroyed me, killed me in the simulation that you helped me shape and mold, but you were never going to fully get rid of me. A chuckle. <laughs> Not that you'd want to. Null tilted his head, placing the cup down in front of him, never having taken a sip. What happened to you? What do you mean? You know exactly what I mean, Caddy. Don't play stupid with me. Oh, Catalyst snickered, leaning back against his chair. You're wondering where my childish naivety is, where all this confidence came from. I call it cockiness. What was that? Nothing. Go on. Null gripped the cup and brought it to his lips, taking a sip. Gods, it tasted amazing, and now it was like he was dying of thirst. The metal being grumbled as he finished the rest of the drink in one gulp, catalyst right there, ready to pour him another cup. Well, it's a long story, Null, but I have you here for as long as I'd like, so I'll give you all the nitty-gritty. There's a war coming. It's already here. Catalyst scoffed. <laughs> I'm sorry, do you call that pissing match between the Imperium and those rebels a real war? <laughs> no, those are children acting like soldiers on both sides. He shook his head, pouring himself another cup. No, my sweet... Foolish friend, the war I'm speaking of is real, dangerous, and yes, it will be quite costly. And what will this war be about? What are the stakes? Reality itself, Null. Reality is the prize that both sides covet like a precious jewel. A silence was placed between them, Catalyst sipping away at his tea while Null just stared at him in bewilderment. Why are you so shocked? What do you mean reality is the prize? Who do you think gave the Imperium the idea to build us? Who do you think truly orchestrated our genesis? He allowed the question to linger for just a moment. I can assure you it wasn't anyone from the Imperium... Hell, it wasn't even a human who put the plans into motion that would eventually lead to us. Catalyst shook his head. Like I said, the Imperium isn't even the biggest piece to this puzzle. They are an important part, sure, but not the biggest. Then who is? Catalyst stood from his chair and moved to stand beside Null, a hand outstretched, lightly pressing against Null's head. Instead of just telling you, allow me to show you. The Imperium likes to think that the spire they found in Germany was the first time our enemy had made their presence known to us, but no. Our first encounter with them was long, long ago, when humanity was still young and the world was practically brand new. His hands pressed harder upon Null's head, and with it came the darkness. Null struggled, but it was brief, his body going limp in the chair, his mind elsewhere.
Soldiers and scientists alike were surrounding Null, all with their eyes glued upon the metal giant as he fell to the floor, his eyes still closed, mumbles pouring out of his lips that made no sense whatsoever. All were too scared to move him, though one soldier did drop to his knees, his head leveled with the metal god. Um, uh, Null? He whispered. N Null, are, are, are you all right? Uh, should I bring the director down to see you? He looked towards the scientists, all of whom simply shrugged, not knowing what to do in this situation. It wasn't like this was a reoccurring event. Null, please, uh, uh, please wake up, or whatever it is you need to do. The Exalted. Null whispered out, just loud enough for the soldier to hear. I... I I'm meeting the Exalted. The soldier blinked. Um, uh, uh, the, the what? Uh, Null, you aren't making any sense. Um, come on, uh, get up, uh, please. Who is this Null you keep speaking of? A dreaded silence hung over everyone there. Uh, <laughs> um, excuse me? Who is this Null you speak of? My name is Rahim, and I am the first to speak with the Exalted. Sable was written and narrated by me, Lane Lloyd. Sable's theme song was written and performed by Moon Platoon, and you can find a link to their SoundCloud in the show notes below. What else can you find in the show notes, you might be asking yourself? Well, you can find our Twitter, Tumblr, and Facebook. Uh, the Facebook, uh, I don't update very regularly, uh, unfortunately. I don't know why I'm so bad at it. I'm so bad at social media. I even started an Instagram for this fucking show for some reason. Uh, which... Maybe I'll put a, sh a link to that in the show notes, but I'm not really doing much on uh, on the Instagram front, so I'm not sure. Um, anyway, that's not important. What is important is that if you like this show, and I think you do, because if if you've somehow listened to the three seasons before this and the nine episodes of season four and are still kind of on the fence... I don't know what to do, but if you just suddenly realize that you like this show, uh, please leave a rating and review on uh, iTunes because that gets us noticed more. I don't know, like, I know some people listen to the show on Stitcher. I don't know how their rating system works. I'm assuming if more people rate the show there, it's going to get noticed more, but I can't, I mean, hey, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say no to any five or four star ratings, let me tell you. But uh, iTunes is the only metric I really know, so uh, more reviews equals more people finding the show and listening to it and hopefully liking it. I hope they like it, and I just hit my soundproofing panel. Oops. Uh, so, as you all know, Sable is part of the wonderful Fate Crafters Network, and we have a plethora of fantastic podcasts. We actually do, and, I, <laughs> and we're getting more talent every single day or we're at least in the process of bringing more talent on, it almost seems like on a daily basis, which is nuts, because I think when I started on this channel, I want to say there were only like seven or eight shows, and it's nuts that we're growing at the, at the rate that we are, and also just like the the amount of people noticing our network now thanks to shows like uh the tunnels and late clarity and uh girls girl in space i don't put girls in space that's the sequel uh they've been getting a lot of notice which means that the channel's getting a lot of notice which is awesome and uh last week i did a terrible uh testimony testimonial <laughs> test testimony we're going to court we're going to court um, <laughs> for, for Rex Riveter, I, uh, 
I, I kind of made, there were a couple of episodes uh, last week, one for an advertisement for a show on Wondery Network, and the other one uh, kind of apologizing for the um, the review, what am I trying to say, the testimonial, I said it right the first time, of uh, Rex Riveter, which is a, a great mystery podcast, you should listen to it. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, Spines, which I'm I'm kind of surprised at myself that I didn't bring this up sooner, because I really fucking love Spines. Um, I'm not sure, I'm trying to remember if we started at the same time, like if we started coming out at the same time, or if they came out just a little bit later than, than I did, but I've been trying to keep up with the show, uh, and every time I listen, it's a, a fucking treat. Uh, I'm just gonna read you the, uh, the little blurb they have, uh, for anyone who's interested in listening, which you should, if you like my show, you're gonna like Spines. It's, it's horror, it's supernatural, there are fucking superpowers in it, like, <laughs> it's everything you could want and more. So, uh, what would you do if you woke up covered in blood, suffering from memory loss, and surrounded by the remains of a human sacrifice? That's how Ren's story begins. To find out what happens next... Listen to Spines, a production of Zoom Doom Stories, which I fucking love that name. Uh, visit SpinesPodcast.com today to find out more. And you totally should, and there's going to be a link to their website in the show notes below. Listen to all the episodes. Just listen to them. You're going to love them. You're going to love, I'm just going to say, 120% of the shows on the Fake Crafters podcasting network. I'm just going to say that. I'm going to throw it out there. You're even going to love the fucking blog we have there. That's how good it is. You're going to love this blog as if it were a podcast. So, <laughs> I'm a fucking dork. <laughs> I need to get out of here. All right, so, anyway, um, I also have a Patreon. <laughs> I, why do I forget to always bring up the Patreon? I have a Patreon, and that'll be in the show notes below. I also, I also, I also... I also have a merch store if you're interested in, in wearing my art on your body. Um, that came out weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to put up the 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 new logo for the store uh, for the show uh, on the store. Um, so hopefully that'll be up at some point. Um, anyway, that's it. I'm gonna get out of here before I run on too long. I am Lane. This has been Sable, and uh, goodbye. <laughs>